Amen. Good evening, everybody. I pray everybody is having an awesome day and has had an awesome week thus far. We're going to go ahead and we're going to open up in prayer. Father God, we thank you. You are so, so good. You are the only good God. Father God, we thank you, Father God, for you, the creator of heaven and earth. You are mindful of us that you care about us and you love us, oh God. And we are so, so grateful, Father. Be glorified, Almighty Yah, in us and through us. Be glorified in the heavens. Be thou glorified in the earth. Be thou glorified. Father God, we come before you, Father God, praying and asking that you forgive us all sins, all iniquities, trespasses, and our transgressions. For it is against thee that we have sinned. And we pray for clean hands and pure hearts. And we ask that you would restore and renew in us right and steadfast spirits, oh God. Father God, we pray, Father God, that as we sup at your table, oh God, that you will continue to feed us and that you will lead and guide us, oh God. And all that you be glorified, Father God, in these last days, these last hours. We love you, Almighty Yah. In Jesus, Yeshua, the Messiah's name, we pray. Amen. So welcome, welcome, everybody. I um, hope everybody got the text that we put, um, I put some questions and notes on the internet on our webpage so that we can, we're going to slow it down. I'm going to slow my roll. I'm going too fast. I thank everybody who gave me input. You know, I think everybody who just, you know, just, uh, the, in love, they talk to me. And I appreciate it so much because this is not about me. You know, this is about God using me to for his people. So I, I just want to make sure that everybody is getting the best that I can give them. However, the rest is up to you and the most high by his Holy Spirit. So I'm slowing down. And we're going to take our time and we're going to enjoy the food, the word of God, and we're just going to sit and move slowly through it. So if anybody didn't get a chance to um, go to the website and, and print them down, print the, um, the questionnaire that I have for the chapters, now you know they're there, but we're going to move slow. We're going to take our time. Amen. So what we're doing is we're going back to chapter 13 because this was the one that I had the most questions about and people want us to go back here. So we're going to go back to 13. We're going to start at 13 and we're going to take our time. But I'm asking that in your time, your Bible study time, that you do read chapters 13, 14, and 15. Now we may, we're not going to get through them all in one night, but I, I, I'd appreciate it if you all do that. So we, when we do, we get there, we're, we're going to have things to talk about. Amen. And you all have homework now. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> so everybody going to be able to participate and everybody's supposed to say, yay, <laughs> homework. <laughs> Amen. However, we're going to still continue to read the chapter and move through it. And we're going to stop and take our time and be led by the Holy Spirit, by what God has given me to impart to you guys. Amen. All right. So we're going to start at Isaiah chapter 13 and verse one. And I'm reading from the um, New King James. Okay. And it says the burden against Babylon, which Isaiah, the son of Amos saw. Verse two, lift up a banner on high, on the high mountain, raise your voice to them, wave your hand that they may enter the gates of the nobles. I've commanded my sanctified ones. I've also called my mighty ones for my anger. Those who rejoice in my exaltation. And I'm going to stop right here. So in verse, we read verses one through two, and I need just somebody to come and tell me or tell all of us against what nation is Isaiah at this time prophesying against? Babylon. Amen. 
<laughs> Babylon. Amen. Amen. Oh, so we know some people got the notes. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Praise God. It is Babylon. Amen. And um, I intended to pull it up, but as we go through further, we're going to see God is prophesying to the king who's sitting on his throne. However, he's also prophesying against the spirit that sits on that king on that throne. And once we read further, we're going to find out who that principality, that power is that's given power to this king. Amen. <clears throat> now, um, verse two, um, it says, let's see, verse well, stop, three. It says, I have commanded my sanctified ones. I've also called my mighty ones for my anger, those who rejoice in my exaltation. So, in verse three, note two, it says, in announcing the judgment against Babylon, what does Isaiah say is at hand? I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I haven't got there yet. Go to verse four. It says the noise of a multitude in the mountains like that of many people, a tumultuous noise of the kingdom of nations gathered together. The Lord of hosts mustered the army for battle. Verse five, they come from a far country, from the end of heaven, the Lord and his weapons of indignation to destroy the whole land. Verse six, well, for the day of the Lord is at hand and it will come as destruction from the almighty. And we're going to stop right there because we're going to spend some time on the day of the Lord, but we, <laughs> we're going to spend some time there because I had a lot of questions about just that. So we're going to talk about that. And some, some things that um, the Most High showed me in that this is the first time that this is even being mentioned is by Isaiah. And we read that in Isaiah chapter two. And we're going to go back and read to what Isaiah said about the day of the Lord. Because I'm going to tell you from right now, from what God has shown me from the beginning of Isaiah chapter two, all the way through the rest of the scriptures, we're going to hear about the day of the Lord, even in the New Testament, the day of the Lord. So let's go back here. And it says um, in verse six, <clears throat> and I know everybody took the time and those who read, they're going to tell me, I want to know in verse six, I mean, um, verse thir chapter 13, six, why is the day of the Lord coming? Why? Any, just raise, anybody raise a hand and answer. <laughs> and we're going to get a lot of answers because everybody studied. <laughs> Go ahead, Pastor Day. Um, actually, sin, um, because number one, what they did unto God's people mm -hmm. and how they sinned against God and rejected him. Amen. That is right. And, you know, um, we can read about that, the day of the Lord. It's um, Joel's chapter two and three. Joel's chapter two and three. So because we're gonna spend some time in this day in the, of the Lord, we're gonna read what Joel has to say. Amen? Because we're going deep, guys. We're going real deep. And the reason we're going deep, because most high say is time. He said, no more time for milk. He said, because we're in the days where we need some meat. It's time now. So we're going deeper and deeper into the things of God. And God has told me I need to slow down. I have to slow down because I got to make sure those who, we all learn different. So we're going to slow down and we're going to take our time and make sure everybody is going to go along at the same time. Now, like I said, everybody ain't not going to get there, provided you're not reading and studying on your own, because you're not going to get it all right here. You're going to have to pray, and you're going to have to read and study on your time. You're going to have to make time for this. We're in the last days and the last hours, and the Most High is speaking to us for just a time as this. Amen? So let us go to Joel. Mm 
Amen. She normally already would have been there. Here we go. Two. We're going to start in Joel chapter two. And we're going to go slow. And in Joel chapter two, it's titled The Day of the Lord. And this is where we're going to start, okay? As Pastor Dave just said, the reasons that the day of the Lord is coming is because God is going to judge sin and what has been done to his people. Amen. So it says, blow the trumpet in Zion and sound an alarm in my holy mountain. Let all the inhabitants of the land tremble for the day of the Lord is coming. For it is at hand, a day of darkness and gloominess, a day of clouds and thick darkness. Like the morning clouds spread over the mountains, a people come great and strong, the like of whom have never been, nor will there ever be any such after them, even for many successive generations. A fire that's going to devour before them and behind them. A flame burns. The land is like the Garden of Eden before them, and behind them is a desolate wilderness. Surely nothing shall escape them. Their appearance is like the appearance of a horse, of horses, and like swift steeds, so they run with a noise like chariots over mountaintops that leap like the noise of a flaming fire that devours the stubble like a strong people set in battle array. Before them, the people wreathe in pain. All faces are drained. Now, this is not against the most high people. This is against the nations that took the most high people into captivity, okay? And the scripture said these are the heathen nations. They run like mighty men. They climb the wall like men of war. Everyone marches in formation and they do not break ranks. They do not push one another. Everyone marches in his own column, though they lunge between the weapons. They are not cut down. They run to and fro in the city. They run on the wall and they climb into the houses. They enter at the windows like a thief. This is the army that the Most High is going to use against the nations during this battle. Now, when we talked about this before, this is the battle that's, I say it's not a war, it's going to be a battle because this is the battle that's going to come against the nation that took the most high people into captivity. Now, when Pastor Ed taught on the book of Revelations, you know, he read about another war. There's going to be another war even after this one. This is just the first one. Because even after we go into our land, when the most high takes us into the land, while we there at at peace and 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 do and with the you know enjoying ourselves, they're gonna come again. <laughs> but we're gonna get to that. We're not gonna get too far ahead. Praise God. And it says, verse ten: the earth quakes before them, and the heavens tremble. The sun and the moon grow dark, and the stars diminish their brightness. The Lord gives voice before His army, for His camp is very great. For strong is the one who executes his word. For the day of the Lord is great and very terrible. Who can endure it? Now, therefore, says the Lord, turn to me with all your heart, with fasting and weeping and mourning. So rend your heart and not your garment. This is to his people. Return to the Lord, your God. For he is gracious and merciful, slow to anger and out of great kindness, and he relents from doing harm. Who knows if he will turn and relent and leave a blessing behind him, a grain offering and a drink offering for the Lord, your God. 15, blow the trumpet in Zion, consecrate a fast, call a sacred assembly, gather the people, sanctify the congregation. 
assemble the elders, gather the children and nursing babes. Let the bridegroom go out from his chamber and the bridegroom and the bride from her dressing room. Let the priests who minister to the Lord weep between the porch and the altar and let them say, spare your people, O Lord, and do not give your heritage to reproach that the nations should rule over them. Why should they say, why should they say among the peoples, where's their God? Then the Lord will be zealous for his land and pity his people. And the Lord will answer and say, say to his people, behold, I will send you grain, new wine and oil, and you will be satisfied by them. And I will no longer make you a reproach among the nations. But I will remove far from you the northern army and will drive him away into a barren and desolate land and his face toward the eastern sea. And I want to stop right there. And let's go into. No, let's go to um, verse. Let's jump down to. Verse 25, so I will restore to you the years that the swarming locusts have eaten, the crawling locusts, the consuming locusts, and the chewing locusts. My great army, which I sent among you, you shall say, you shall eat in plenty and, the, and, and be satisfied and praise the name of the Lord your God, who's dealt wondrously with you. And my people shall never be put to shame. Then you shall know that I am in the midst of Israel. I am the Lord your God, and there is no other but me. My God, my people shall never be put to shame. And it shall come to pass afterward that I will pour out my spirit on all flesh, and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. Your old men shall dream dreams, and your young men shall see visions, and also on my servants and on my maid servants, I will pour out my spirit in those days, I will show wonders in heaven and in the earth and blood and fire and pillars of smoke. Verse 31, the sun shall be turned into darkness, the moon into blood before the coming of the great and awesome day of the Lord. And it shall come to pass that whoever calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. For in Mount Zion and in Jerusalem, there shall be deliverance. And the Lord is said among the remnant whom he, among the remnant whom the Lord calls. Now, I want to know, has anybody prior to now heard about the day of the Lord? Anybody? You have? Did you know that it was about what we're reading now, what, we're, what the scriptures are showing us, is that how it was taught to you? Is that what you knew it to be? Well, I know it to be now because I just studied over the last six months, but never been taught that before. Yeah. yeah. Okay. I'm reading through the book of Joel before, when reading through that in the book of Isaiah and Jeremiah, it talks about it. Oh, yes. <laughs> Jeremiah goes, yeah. yes. Amen. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> <laughs> okay, praise God. Sister Jo? Yeah, um, so yes, I, I have only for my reading, never have been literally taught this, uh, the last, the end of this chapter has always been misused in people ministering. Um, they always misuse this because now mm -hmm. when you really look at it and see what he's talking about, the restoration of his people you know, that they would be spared from this, uh, you know, because people always use the uh, Joel 2, 28, you know, I will pour out my spirit. They use it for everything, yeah. but not what it's really supposed to be for. Yeah. Now, after it, once you've read from the beginning to now, yes. you understand what it is. But the, what, what I really wanted to say, Sister Sylvia, is that I never saw the day of the Lord in this magnitude, I mean, that it is really spelled out to you exactly. I mean, I would, this is torment. You, I mean, really, somebody really needs to pay attention. This army is coming and there is no escape. None. Especially when it tells you that what, you know, this army is going to be 
I mean, going through the walls, the windows, anything that you think you can hide from, you will never. And they are coming and behind them is fire. So it's burning everything that it comes. <laughs> I mean, it is just doing some damage. Yes. I, I mean, I've heard of the day of the Lord, but yeah. not to this magnitude. Amen. <laughs> so reading it in Joel <laughs> and also reading it in, in, in Isaiah, the second chapter, going back and really looking that, you know, that when it says, you know, uh, especially in Isaiah, the second chapter, when it actually defines it, you know, that what is really the day of the Lord, you know, yes. it's God's judgment on the wicked people, exactly like Pastor um, Dave said, you mm -hmm. know, and also those who think that they're, they're standing higher than God, mightier yes. than he is, you know, who does not take him into, and, and it, it is the heart of the people, it's the wickedness that we, you know, that people have, okay? Amen. So, yeah. I, 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 I enjoyed it when I was reading it. Yes. Praise yes. God. Amen. 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 Sister Eva. Uh, to answer your question, I had not been taught it, but I had heard of it. But when I began to do a study on it, especially, um, I think you were back in 15, that I began to study it out. And uh, some ver version that I studied was the great and terrible day of the Lord, not knowing that it was the army that the Most High called. He's commanding this army to, to, to take care of the judgment coming against the nations. And I had also, I'd never learned until 15 until why this judgment had to come forth in the day of the Lord. It Amen. was because, of course, like Pastor David and Sister Joe just said, was because, of course, the sin rebellion, disobedient, and the way that they were treating, they had treated the most highest people. So I, I came into that myself because I think from the teaching that I had gotten, you know, I had to unlearn to learn mm -hmm. that it was about something else, you know, and yeah. I'm not going to get into that. You probably get into that later, but I don't want to bust the bubble. But yeah, I am excited because I look at it completely different now with the day of the Lord because he's going to, I always say, he's going to take care of his because this verse here up there in verse uh, 32, he said he has a remnant. There's a remnant. He's going to take care of his people. So amen. the day of the Lord is very <laughs> exciting. Yes. Amen. Uh, Elder Barnes or Sister Pat. Go ahead. Yeah, I had heard the day of the Lord, Sister Sylvia. I've been studying, reading in Isaiah. I'm like, I was like Pastor Dave and Sister Eve and all that. I started reading the last, maybe about the last two, three years. But like Joe said, it there is no escaping this army. This army is fierce. That's Amen. the only thing I can say. It's fierce. I mean, he has, if you're not, if you're not, he's coming with, He's coming with 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 a sword, but I mean it's a fierce army. But I had I had not been taught on it ever, as, as a believer. I had never been taught on it before. Amen, amen. Uh, uh, Pastor Ed, uh, yes, just chiming with it, what everybody said. It, it, you're right. I've never been taught it or, or heard it taught, but I would just ask us to consider one thing and, and not think of the day of the Lord as a one-time event. It's more of a posture that the Lord takes. Because if we look at the Passover, that is a type of the day of the Lord. Because he sent out the death angel to destroy a certain enemy and to achieve a certain thing. And he said, okay, you can kill every, you kill, these are the targets. Mm -hmm. Everybody that's not covered by the blood, every firstborn that's not covered by the blood, got to go. And see, that meant when I think of the day of the Lord, that is when God stands up and there is no power to resist him. He exerts his full power. He has to a degree set his mercy aside and said, this sin has got to the point where I'm going to deal with it now. And you know, we don't think, you know, I hope nobody gets in the, the opinion that the day of the Lord is just one event that's going to happen somewhere. That's next right. Time. That's the right. The day of the Lord happens every day. <laughs> every time he exercised preeminence over evil, that's the day of the Lord. 
And you think as believers, every day should be the day of the Lord to some measure to us. Every day, because we're giving preeminence in our life. But I thought about the Passover. It, it's, yeah, we, we, you know, I don't think we understand the gravity of the day of the Lord. But that's when he shows that he is God and nobody else is. <laughs> Amen. Amen. And it's going to be a day like no other. And it won't be a day there, like Pastor Ed said, there's been ongoing. It's like when God moves, he moves. And we can call it this day of the Lord <laughs> when he, when God moves. But the, and this event is going to be one that oh is highly recognizable. It will not be one that we will even have to guess what's going on. It will we will know exactly what is happening because we will know it from His Word because He's explained to us. But you know what? This is the day of recompense. I, I say it's a recompense. It's a time of recompense. The Lord is dealing with those who have come against and. And and um, everything that's ever been done, you know, now, and I see the things and I think back on the things and the things we've studied and the things they don't want us to know. And there's a recompense for all of it from all the way back from every chapter we've read so far to every one we're about to go through till we get to Revelation, because that all go together. It all goes together. Amen. And we're going to see that as we go through, continue to go through Isaiah. It all goes together. And we've been told that these are like different events and different. They dissected the Bible and, and, and told us about, you know, split stuff up. And yeah, and, and, and it's not split up. And even this whole New Testament, Old Testament, it's the Bible. And it all go together. That all, that's, that's man-made. That's man-made. Amen. Sister Eve, you had your hand up. You, you know, when I, in my younger uh, walk, when I was a, a, a hallelujah, now I'm a believer, uh, that, that we, I was taught that this has already happened. Mm. I don't know how many of you guys was taught that, but I was taught uh, that this was this had already taken place, and in some areas, uh, no, you just stayed in the New Testament because that all that's over. Yeah, yeah, the dispensation of the you know of, no, of grace. We all got that grace thing going on. You don't need to read the Old Testament because that's already done with. You. I was actually taught that, so I had even in, <laughs> I had this little New Testament Bible with just Psalms and Proverbs in it. I don't know if anybody else had. It. That's all I had. Mm -hmm. No old, no covenant. That's what the Old Testament is. Uh, it's the covenant. The covenant. Amen. I mean, but anyway, I was I was taught that that has already happened. And yes. the most high, he can do whatever he want to do at whatever time he want to do it. He can repeat. He can repeat if he wants to. Yeah. And you know what? We're going to come to see why. As we learn in this and we're reading more and re begin going deeper in, we're going to see why they wanted to keep it separate and even say to the point, we no longer even need to go to the Old Testament. I've heard that. I was taught that, that the Old Testament is not for now. Any, it's not for now. We're in the New Testament and this whole, you know, new, that uh, uh, whatever thing. But uh, like I said, I could never wrap my brain around dispensation. I remember we were in class and I was trying, but I it kept going on my head. I, I I just couldn't wrap my brain around it. It was look, okay. <laughs> Pastor Ed, you had your hand up. Go ahead. Yes, yeah, so as Eve would talk, of course, we're in the same room. Yes, because as she was talking, it came back. And I've heard this. I don't know if other people have heard this or not. They will say now is the dispensation of grace. Mm -hmm. See, that is pure lunacy. Mm -hmm. It's basically saying there's not going to be any judgment for your sin. You yes. Just, you, repent, you just go back and win, <laughs> win, give me some money and you're good. Well, wait a minute. You telling me God is still not God? They act like the God of what we refer to as the old government or the God of judgment or the God of wrath, the warring God has somehow disappeared. That yes. is pure madness and that will send you to hell. Amen. There's no such thing as dispensation of grace. We Amen. do have grace, 
But there's no, this is not some grace period. We've always had grace, not none of us be here. But don't fall into these people that try to say we're in this certain time and God's going to behave a certain way. Because if you believe in dispensation of grace, you are limiting and saying God's not a can't, whatever rationale that you going to do certain things now about sin. Like his attitude Amen. between sin is softened. Amen. Yeah, that's, that's a lie. That's not true. No such thing. If you ever hear dispensation of grace again, Cut that person off. I recommend don't listen to them because they're going to lead you astray and you end up in hell. Thank you. Good. Amen. And that's what it's designed to do. And since Pastor Ed went on, brought, talked about that, I'm going to go on into the whole spill on dispensation. We're going to stop right here because this is what the most high is doing because it blew me away. Now, this is from my master study Bible. Let me show you where I'm getting it from. It says dispensation and administration, ministry, or stewardship for which a person has responsibility in God's administration of salvation. In certain interpretations of scripture, a period of time during which people are tested in respect to their obedience to a specific revelation of God's will. The word dispensation became prominent in biblical studies in an eschatological movement in 1830 in Scotland, based on the visions of Margaret MacDonald. A vision. This, this where it came from. And it says, of the she was of the Plymouth. Brethren, a uh, brethren church, she believed that the return of Christ would be in two distinct stages. And it says that believers would be caught up to the Lord in the air before the days of the Antichrist. So, this is where this whole um, thing rapture comes from. That's where it came from. It says a final revelation of Christ at the end of the age. This two-stage return of the Lord, unheard of before 1830. Lord, my God. They just gave, look, you guys, they, look, this woman had a vision. Who knows? She might've been on coke crack. We don't know. And they took it and they ran with it and made it into something. And look how much money has been made off of it. The left behind, all this stuff to keep us going and going. Go. Do you know how many people going to go to hell behind this? Unrepentant. It says it became the platform for a movement called dispensationalism. And I'm going to stop right there because I promise you, if you go Google it, you can find it. Unbelievable. When I found that, it blew my mind. And I'm going to tell you, you know how I found it, came across that? The Holy Spirit stopped me while I was on my way looking for a day of the Lord. And you know, it's in the D's. And so, and it got my, it got my attention. So I said, just for session, let me read this. And I was like, my Lord, my God. Unbelievable. So they've taught that they made a whole doctrine off of this woman who had a vision. And then they fed this to us. They taught this to us and said, this is what's going to happen. We're going to have a rapture and all of this stuff. And second Thessalonians, don't say that. And you're going to find out as we go on that it's tied into the day of the Lord. And he don't say nothing about us going into heaven. He said, those who we're going to be caught up to meet him in the end. And that's those who are asleep first going to be caught up. And then those who remain. But we're going to see as we go on, because I don't want to go too far or deep into that. But it's amazing to me how we've been. I know y'all, look, y'all, I'm taking y'all down with me. Look, if the Lord going to have me going, y'all going too. Because it blew my mind. I'm going to tell y'all, I almost thought I was going to have to get up and take another headache powder. So my neck started hurting. <laughs> Look, but praise God, I'm telling you, we're going to learn together. Okay? Hallelujah. 
So now let us go on into, we're going to continue talking about the day of the Lord. And we're going to go into um, chapter three of Joel, of Joel. Let's keep on talking about the day of the Lord. We'll see what the word is saying about it. And it says in three verse one, it says, for behold, in those days, and at that time, when I bring back the captives of Judah and Jerusalem, and he's talking about when that day of the Lord come in those days and in that time when that occurs, I will also gather all nations and bring them down to the valley of Jehoshaphat. Now, this right here that's about to happen right here in the valley of Jehoshaphat, this is the war, that second war that Pastor Ed was mentioning that's tied into the book of Revelations. Because this is when we're going to be in our land already, and they're going to try to get up and come again and say, let us go up against this, this nation, these people in this unwall. They unwall. They living in peace. They ain't got no walls. They ain't got no doors, no gates. And we also going to learn, too, how we going to get reparations. Okay? We're going to talk about that, too. We're going to learn a whole lot of stuff. See, we keep talking about reparations, and we want them to get... God is the one who's going to determine that. We God's people. God is the one going to say, I'm going to tell you what you're going to do to repay him. Okay? So let us go ahead and read this. And it, said, I'll, it says, and I will enter into judgment with them there on account of my people, my heritage Israel, whom they scattered among the nations. They've also divided up my land. And this is the, called the Valley of Decision. And it says, they also divided up my land and they've cast lots for my people and have given a boy as payment for a harlot and sold a girl for wine that they may drink. Bam. And it says, indeed, what have you to do with me, O Tyre? And he goes talking about Tyre and Zidon. And we know this again is uh uh, Satan or Lucifer who's sitting on this king here, but we, we're not going there. And let's go down to verse five. It says, because you've taken my silver and my gold and have carried into your temples my prized possessions. Also the people of Judah, the people of Jerusalem, you've sold to the Greeks that you may remove them far from their borders. Seven, behold, I will raise them out of the place where you have sold them. And I will return your retaliation upon your own head. I will sell your sons and your daughters into the hand of the people of Judah. And they will sell them to the Sabians, to a people far off. For the Lord has spoken. And it says, verse nine, proclaim this among the nations. I'm going to stop right there. So, because we'll come back to it again later in Isaiah. But this is what is the important thing. And we need to know all these things because Zechariah, Zephaniah, they all, Jeremiah, they all are talking about this. They all are talking about this. And so we need, look, this is the, the things we're supposed to be talking to each other and encourage. Look, hey, look, we, joy cometh in the morning. <laughs> now we know what the, the morning is. Now we know what the morning is. God going to deliver his people. He goes, this is not for us. We didn't, we already going through. Look, we didn't, this, we look, jo, J, Jacob been in trouble a long time already. Talking about the, the, Jacob's trouble. Jacob been in trouble a long time. Praise God. So let's get back to Isaiah. We at, we're at four. Hallelujah. Oh, I went all the way to the same four. What I did want to read before I go back there. I wanted to read Isaiah chapter two, uh, Sister Joe brought it up. And this is where it's first mentioned about the day of the Lord. We're gonna go, let's go back and read this again because we want to make sure we get understand of the day of the Lord. Let's, we talking about it. So let's go there. Let's go to Isaiah two. And it says, the word that came to Isaiah, the son of Amos, that he saw concerning Judah and Jerusalem. Now it shall come to pass in the latter days 
that the mountains of the Lord's house shall be established on the top of the mountains and shall be exalted above the hills and all nations shall flow to it. Many people shall come and say, come, let us go up to the mountain of the Lord, to the house of the, of the God of Jacob. And he will teach us his ways and he, and we shall walk in his paths for out of Zion shall go forth the law and the word of the Lord from Jerusalem. And he shall judge between the nations and rebuke many people. And they shall beat their swords into plowshares and their spears into pruning hooks. Nations shall not lift up sword against nation, neither shall they learn war anymore. Now, this is at the end of the war that's going to come. The second war. Remember, we got one and two. We good here? Anybody said we confused? Tell me now. Okay. It says, O house of Jacob, come and let us walk in the light of the Lord. For you have forsaken your people the house of Jacob, because they are filled with Eastern ways. They are soothsayers sayers like the Philistines, and they are pleased with the, ch the, the children of the foreigners. Their land is also full of silver and gold, and there is no end to their treasures. Their land is also full of horses, and there is no end to their chariots. Their land is also full of idols. Their worship, they worship the work of their own hands that which their own fingers have made and people bow down and each man humbles himself. There, therefore do not forgive them. Okay, that was Isaiah prophesying against their sin. Now, verse 10, enter into the rock, hide in the dust from the terror of the Lord and the glory of his majesty. The lofty looks of man shall be humble the haughtiness of men shall be bowed down and the Lord alone shall be exalted in that day. For the day of the Lord of hosts shall come upon everything proud and lofty, upon everything lifted up and it shall be brought low upon all the cedars of Lebanon that are high and lifted up upon all the oaks of Bashan, upon all the high mountains, upon all the hills that are lifted up, upon every high tower, and upon every fortified wall, upon all the ships of Tarshish, and upon all the beautiful slopes, the loftiness of men shall be bowed down, and the haughtiness of men shall be brought low. The Lord alone will be exalted in that day, but the idols he shall utterly abolish. And they shall go into the holes of the rocks, and into the caves of the earth, from the terror of the Lord, and the glory of his majesty, when he rises to shake the earth mightily. In that day, a man will cast away his idols of silver and his idols of gold, which they made each for himself to worship, to the moles and bats, to go into the clefts of the rocks and into the crags of the rugged rocks. From the terror of the Lord and the glory of his majesty when he arises to shake the earth, sever yourselves from such a man whose breath is in his nostrils, for of what account is he? And then, you know, and it's, and, it was, and that's it right there. And that is the first mention of the day of the Lord. That is his first mention. But as we go through, we're going to, I want to stick here for a while. And, and, and I want to read something because it's very, very important that we know in all of this, who the people of God are, because if we don't know who they are, we're going to be totally lost and confused because we won't even know who or what to look for. And I want to read this because we read this in Isaiah 8, 18. And y'all write these down. These, please write these down. Write them down. Put no, Make notes of these. We read it already, but I, I'm just going to read this one little verse here. And it says, Isaiah 8, 18. It says, here am I and the children whom the Lord has given me. And this is Isaiah talking. And he said, we are for signs and wonders in Israel from the Lord of hosts who dwells in Mount Zion. So I was sharing this earlier that I was studying and writing, make, taking notes, and I realized I had looked up these in the concordance, sign and wonder what this means. And it says a sign and a wonder. Strong's H226, 
a sign, a distinguishing mark, a banner, remembrance, a miraculous sign, an omen, and a warning, a token, an enzyme, a standard, a miracle, proof. This is who Israel and Judah are. So that right here, we, this is the they are for signs and wonders. Look, you can't even understand the scripture fully without knowing who this people is. Because if you don't know, they are the mark for everything. You got to keep your, we've always heard that. Keep your eye on Israel. Keep your eye on Israel. Because when it's dark and terrible, when all these things come to pass, we're going to know these are the people who these signs are following. So you can't even understand the prophecies if you're not even keeping your eye on the sign. Now let's look up that part, wonder. H4159. All you got to do is write down a number and you go to Strong's or pull it up on the internet and you're going to get these definitions. A wonder. A wonder is a sign or a miracle as a special display of God's power. Sign or token of a future event. This is who Israel and Judah are. I, I, I'm, 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 look. So when, and even there's um something in, uh, what was it? Where was it? Where was it? It was in, um, Isaiah, Psalm seventy-one seven. And you all just write these down real quick, just so you can have them in your study time. Psalm 71, 7. And it says, you are my trust from my youth. By you, I've been upheld from birth. You are he who took me out of my mother's womb. My praise shall be continual of you. I have become as a wonder to many. And it all ties back to the, Israel is a sign and a wonder. Wherever they go, even back then, God used, we've always been for a sign and for a wonder. Amen. So just keep that in your notes. So let's go back to where we left off and here in 13. And you guys tell me if I'm going too fast, if I'm moving too slow, just tell, talk to me. Because I'm going to tell you all this time, you know, and I'm going to tell you something. I used to pray for them people over there. But we know now from reading this, everything we've been reading, so it doesn't add up. It don't add up. It's it like, okay, if this is supposed to happen later, or you say at a later time, you know, during this day of the Lord, how can... Those people are, somebody are, Israel already be there because they can't be there. Even if you don't, even if we don't believe we are the people, there's no way that the people are there can ever be because it don't line up with scripture. It just don't line up. It don't add up. It just doesn't add up. Amen. So now I don't want to go beyond day of the Lord. I want to go, I want to kind of stay with this for um, now. <laughs> if, you know, I want to kind of, if anybody else had any questions, because we're going to be through going back and forth in and out the days of the Lord. We're going to see it throughout Isaiah. And we're going to go into it in Jeremiah. And we're going to go to it further because we're going to talk about this Babylonian man, this spirit thing here. But because this is really deep, I really don't want to kind of get into the, um, him because I want to kind of spend time on that too and make sure we have understanding. 
when we start talking about um, Babylon and the prophecy against it. And it's a lot, and, and it, Isaiah is not the only one who prophesied against Babylon. When we start going to Jeremiah, I think the last two chapters of Jeremiah, I think he really goes deep into prophesying again back against Babylon. So, because it's not like something that happened suddenly during Jer Isaiah's time, it was a a, a latter e uh, event that occurred. Go ahead, Sister Eve, or Pastor Ed. I just wanted to say when you was uh, doing the definition of that sign and that wonder, and uh, Jeremiah fifty and fifty one of those verses. Um, also that they're prophesying and in Obadiah also he prophesied against Edom uh, in a vision, a dream. Uh, that sign and that wonder. When I began to study that out, what I came up with, even from the Strong's, even when he, you do it and you, the word you can transfer, it transfer it also into the uh, the Hebrew language or, or what the Greek. It is a sign that the Most High put upon a people that how you will know them. But that sign, if you read the word, it says, shall be upon them forever. Forever. That's how you will know that sign and that wonder. Not only uh that sign will be upon them but but they won't even know that the sign is upon them in their blindness and even in their captivity have any of us on this on this zoom ever asked why what did i do why am i at the bottom of the totem pole what 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 did i do look why do they hate me so bad that's a sign the wonder is in my life, I personally take it. It was when I began to believe what he had said and what he had spoken, even in the sign and even in the wonder. And see, you we sometimes we focus on the wrong thing and we are focused on the wrong people, not knowing that these people who have the sign and the wonder on them, their life, they are your time clock. They're the clock. Because these are the only people that when they pray, like my husband did the study in Judges, when they pray, when they cry out to their God, even in their mess, he will answer. So the main reason that uh, when the people begin to pray out, holler out and pray out to their God, and he answered, that sign is, on those people because he will answer them. Not saying that he won't answer any other nation that's standing in righteousness in the name of Yahshua. That's not what I'm saying. But it's a place of his inheritance where he will answer because of the sign and the wonder that he had put on the people forever. Forever. And if you read Romans 11 and you study that chapter out, Romans 11, Romans 8, Romans 9, you and Ephesians 1 and Ephesians 3, even when Paul was praying, you will get the revelation of that, I pray. So I just wanted to share that. That sign and wonder is there forever. Uh, Amen. On this side. Amen. Amen. Well, um, I have asked God why everybody hate Black people. <laughs> I did. I ain't going to lie. I, I have talked to God about that. I remember, I can literally remember the most how won't let me forget it that they I really I literally cried out and asked God why we are so hated why people don't like us why I don't care what country you go to I don't care what island you own black people all you know us as a people not all black people because you go to some countries of Africa and people are very prosperous and and now that's a whole nother story but we got to understand who we, all black people are not the same. That's another thing. Let's get that while we're talking about it now. All black people are not the same people. Just like all people, um, all Caucasian people aren't the same. They know who they are. They say, I'm Irish, I'm Italian, I'm English, I'm British, I'm from, I they know who they are. We were the only people who never knew. 
But that, you know, we are, but it was meant to be that way. God meant it to be that way. It was part of the curse. When we read Deuteronomy 28, we noticed it was part of the curse. That's why, you know what? The first thing they'll throw in our face a lot of times about slavery, they say, well, your own people sold you into slavery. That's a lie. That is not true. That is not true. Because now we're finding out that all the people are the same people. Just because they were the same color, they not the same people. Different tribes of different nations. And they say these were people down here peculiar, they down here, they got, they go, they, they don't, they, they uh, uh, got the day, they don't do nothing on the set. They got this thing they call the Sabbath day. They got this tent and they in here going out and they praying. They don't, you know, these people are different. These people are different, but because they're under the curse, eventually, this is how we see now, even how history joins together with the scriptures. We see now how it all comes together how we scattered when it says my people been scattered to the four corners of the earth what judah has and 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 then israel we read off already and i been scattered we're scattered you know into the nations other nations so now we can see being scattered you know how it talks about you know many of us in are in africa but then where the slave ships came in where they came in and they took work from the west coast of africa even there's a map we can find out if I can find a map I'll get it to you and put it up for you it called it's called Judah land on the west coast of Africa they they try to hide that map real deep <laughs> they did they try to hide it real deep you know and I'm gonna tell you even now a lot of stuff I, you know the day of the Lord I could not understand why they split it up and you can't even go look it up as one event so many things have changed. It was hard to even just find a, a lot of even um, data trying to put the scriptures together that all compiled day of the Lord. I had to go get old books and old Bibles because they split it up. Like when you go look it up, it's just day, Lord. You know, they, they broke it up. So, but it's one event. It is, it's a one event thing. And I couldn't understand why it couldn't be researched out that way. You know, there are people who've done commentary on it. I could find that, but not when I went to look up in the concordance, it's broke up. But when I went to look up other events, the whole thing is there. The whole thing was right there, but not that. Not that. It's amazing to me, but God is good. And it's amazing where God has us right now. And he's waking us up. Sister Joe. I thought you were saying something you want us to hear. <laughs> no, 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 no. I wasn't. I'm sorry, James. That's asked okay. A question, and I was just answering. James, you got me echoing. Turn down. <laughs> but uh, I was just answering. Amen. You know. But does anybody have any questions, though? You know, because like I said, I really want everybody to engage and I want people to understand as the best as I can present it. But like I said, we still on our own time. We're praying and we're reading. I, I just really want to make sure we understand what's going on because we are entering into that time. You guys, I'm telling you, we're in it. I'm talking about entering. We're in it. OK, praise God. So if you put your hand back up. Yes, ma'am. I just wanted to say, when you ask anybody got anything else to say, um, we, I, to my understanding, when we, or when you get a revelation of prophecy, when you get a revelation of scripture overall, just overall scripture, I have to understand, I usually say we, I have to understand that no, when the word comes and it inspires me to study it out, whether what I'm doing it in the Strong's, the Vines, the Greek, the Hebrew, the Sefer, Josephus, all them books, whatever, when you study it out, I don't care how much you study it out from Maccabees, Jubilees, Enoch, what, all them books, can nobody give it to you in Revelation like the Holy Spirit. He is the teacher. All we do is share. Only he can give you the divine revelation on what you need to know. I'm pointing at myself. What I need to know. So we can never take charge or charge somebody else that they're 
oh, this ain't right. When you got scripture to back up something and you live in it, that's all you need right there. Because he'll reveal it to you. And when he reveal it to you, he's revealing you, he's revealing me actually to myself. And he's giving me the revelation that, listen, I am doing this. Nobody else ain't. Now, for such a time as this, it's time. It's time. And it must be done quickly. There's an urgency in the spirit. That's what I discern. There's an urgency in the spirit that we are to uh, be learned, teachable, but he's the one that will do it. None of us on this Zoom can do it. Only he can do it, whether it's prophetic, prophecy, and by revelation. Always remember that. Always remember that. And, and oh, can nobody do that but the tongue of the learned. It's only when we discipline and give it to the most high. And that's what he'll discipline. Amen. That's all I had, Sister Sylvia. Amen. So <clears throat> it's 8.01. And because <clears throat> this is, I want to give everybody more time to kind of like go deeper into the day of the Lord. And then, um, and then we're going to pick up because we stopped at six. And I want to go ahead and at least get through next Wednesday. We're going to get all the way to, if we can, 16. Because 17, yeah, we're going to get to, uh, if we can, at least try to get through 16. And if, yeah, I want to get all the way. If we can finish up 13 next Wednesday. Amen. And you guys study more. Go, go ahead and please read, read, please read the scriptures I gave you. And you all look up what scriptures you all can find and um, as it concerns day of the Lord. And let's talk about it further. Amen. Amen. Y'all ready to pray? Praise God. Father God, we thank you. We give you all the glory, honor, praise, almighty Yahuwah, for you alone are worthy. We are so, 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 so grateful, almighty Yah. We thank you for your love. We thank you for your grace. We thank you for your mercies. We thank you, Father God, that you love us, oh God. We thank you for restoration. We thank you for life and life more abundantly. We thank you for placing us above and not beneath, for making us the head and not the tail, first and not last, oh God. We thank you above all for Jesus, for it's because of your son, oh God, we can now be the head and not the tail. We can now be first and not last. We can now be above and not beneath, oh God. We thank you, oh God, because of Jesus, we, our hands prospered what we set them to do, pleasing in your sight, oh God. We thank you, oh God for your love, oh God, for your kindness. Thank you, Father God. We pray, Father God, for our families, oh God. We pray for every household of KCM and everyone that's represented or on uh, Zoom tonight, oh God. We pray a blessing over them. We ask that you continue to cover, keep and protect them and their families, their Father God, and their children, their grandchildren, oh God, their great-grandchildren, oh God. Keep them safe, oh God. Keep us safe from all hurt, harm, and danger, Father, in the name of Jesus. And camp your angels round about us, Father God, to protect us and keep us, lifting us up, lest we should dash our feet against a stone. But camp your angels round our homes, O oh God, our properties, O oh God. Don't let any foul, unclean man, beast, or spirit come on our properties or into our homes, O oh God, and the places our children dwell, O oh God, in the name of Jesus. We love you, Father God. We thank you, but we know you loved us first. We give you all the glory. We give you all the honor. We give you all the praise. In Jesus, Yeshua, the Messiah's name, we pray. Amen. Oh, I think my battery about to go. <laughs> <laughs>